Hello and welcome to today's session, which is looking at how to do a Kruskal Wallace H test in SPSS. So by now you may well have done a chi square test, and then you may well have then gone and done a Man Whitney U test from our last session. Now a Man Whitney U test is really very good test for when you've got a difference between two variables in the population, such as male or female. Now, Kruskal Wallace H is also a rank based non parametric test similar to Man Whitney that seeks to determine the difference between a population of more than two independent variables. So, while Man Whitney U focuses on just male, female, or group A or group B, a Kruskal Wallace H test actually looks at more than two groups. So, you could have age categories, for example, such as 15 to 28. 29 to 40 and 41 and above, or simply looking at group A, group B and group C. So similar to all the other tests so far, they have assumptions. And the Kruskal Wallace H test assumptions are that your dependent variable, so the thing that you're testing, is a Likert um, or ordinal, that your independent variables consist of more than two independent groups, so group A, group B, group C. If you only had two, you would use a Man Whitney U. That no two groups or participants overlap, so we can't have a person in group A who is also in group B. And that finally, the shape and distribution of our data is not normal. So we would have already done normality tests to know that, and we'll also look at some how it looks uh, on the data. So we would run this on non-normal data. This is a non-parametric test. So let's pop into SPSS and do our first part of our Kruskal Wars H test. Okay, so we're now in SPSS and we're going to look at a Kruskal Wallace H test. So similar to the Man Whitney U test where we looked at gender and if there was a difference on the scale of one is not an issue to ten apocalyptic climate changes, we're going to see if age has a difference. Um, now, I have three groups of ages, and we're going to see if there's a difference there between them all. But, first and foremost, if you remember, we always have to state our null hypothesis and our alternative. So, I'm going to pop up a, a file, and you can write this on paper, what your null and your alternative is. So, popping back into my Word file, my hypothesis, I hypothesize that those who are aged over 50 are more likely to believe climate change is less apocalyptic than the 18 to 29 year olds in my survey. So our null hypothesis, which Kruskal Wallace will be testing, is that the scale of how apocalyptic the climate change emergency is, is the same across age categories. So effectively, it doesn't matter how old you are, it has no impact on what you think of it. Obviously in the real world that's not true, and that's what we're testing for. So popping back into SPSS, we're going to follow the very simple and same process as we did before. We're going to go to Analyze, Non-Parametric, and Independent Samples. So find your question and pop it across into here. Make sure that it's scale. If it's not scale, go back into Variable View and change that to scale. And then find where your age is. Here's mine, because I've recoded my data from before to three categories. And again, simply that's all you have to do, click Run. And SPSS will produce a file for you. So the first thing we see here is our null hypothesis is stated that the distribution on a scale of 1 to 10 of how serious you think climate change emergency is, is the same. So that's similar to what our null hypothesis was. It's telling you that a Kruskal Wallace H test was conducted. And it's also telling us here that we're less than 0.05. So we have a significance somewhere. We know that we can now reject our null hypothesis. We know that there is a difference between age and how apocalyptic they believe it is. However, we don't know where exactly that difference lies. Because while it was Man Whitney was between two, we're now testing it between three different groups. So we can go ahead first and foremost and write our first part of our Kruskal Wallace, we can write that down. And I'll show you how to do that. So how you would write the first part of your Kruskal Wallace H test is the following. 
changing what you need to to suit your question. So you would say a Kruskal Wallace H test was run to determine if there were differences in, and here you would put what well, question. So I've put the climate change emergency score between, and for me, I was looking at three different ages. You may put three groups here if you're looking at A, B, or C, for example. Then you simply list the uh, the name and how many people are in that particular one. So I have 18 to 29, as and there was 103 of them. I have 30 to 49, and there was 35, and 50 plus was 19. And to find that data, you should have that in your frequency file that you did the first ever time you ever opened up SPSS and you did your frequency counts you'll find that data in there and if not you simply go to analyze descriptive stats frequencies throw that one in there and then click OK. The distribution of climate emergency score was not similar for all groups as assessed by a visual inspection of a box plot and I'll show you what that looks like and the distributions of the climate change emergency scores were statistically significantly different between the groups. So X2 denotes that it's um, a test. This here is your number of degrees of freedom, which it tells you about. This is your test score, and then this is your p-value. So I'll show you what that looks like. So back in SPSS then, your degrees of freedom is here. That's where you find that information from. Your test statistic score goes in here and your p-value you will find here. Now the visual inspection of a box plot, okay, as you can see these box plots are not similar. They're not the same size, they're not in the same place, so therefore we have to state that they're not the same. That is important. However, our Kruskal Wallace test is not done yet because although we know that there's a statistical difference between the ages, we don't know yet no is it between 18 and 29s and 50 olds, or is it 50s and 40s? We don't know yet, so we have to run a post hoc test. And that's what I'll talk you through now. So, in order to find where that difference lies, we need to run a post hoc test. Now, luckily for you guys, SPSS automatically runs a post hoc test for you. And this is called a pairwise comparison in SPSS. And it uses the Dunn Z test. And done in 1964, stipulated an exact calculation and workings for when a specific pairwise comparison is made across a data set. And what Dunn Z test does, it approximates the exact rank sum test statistics by using the mean rankings of the outcome of each group from the preceding Kruskal Wallace's test and bases inference on the difference mean ranks within those groups. But you don't need to worry about that too much because SPSS will do that for you. So that will tell us where our significance lies in between the different levels. However, there is something else that we also need to do. Now, in SPSS and any data software package or any, any type, of, even if you did this on paper, um, statistical tests, there's a thing called type 1 error. Now type 1 error is introduced when you run multiple tests on the same set of data. So if you imagine Kruskal Wallace is comparing our three age groups, we have age group A, age group B and age group C. So it's using the one test to look at A against B, A against C, B against A, B against C, C against A, C against B, and if you keep doing that and you keep multiplying it, then there's a chance that you may encounter some type 1 error. It's just the way statistical tests are done. So a Bonferroni correction is utilised at the postdoc stage to eliminate this type 1 error. So when you run tests with multiple null hypotheses, type 1 errors can occur. So a Bonferroni correction is the adjustment to your significance level, your p-value. Okay? So in its simplest form, a Bonferroni correction is the division of the critical p-value by the number of comparisons being made. The more comparisons you make, the more groups that you're running against, then the higher your type 1 error, so your larger your Bonferroni correction. Because if you didn't correct it and you had a p-value of 0.001, for example, 
well then you may well have a false positive because once you've added in that little room for error it might actually be above 0.05 so it might not actually be significant now in SPSS again you don't have to worry about this because SPS will, SPSS will already apply a Bonferroni correction to your data when you're using a Kruskal Wallace H test. So let's go back into SPSS and find out where our significance lies. Okay, so we're back in SPSS. We've done all box ops, we've done all facing. So now we scroll down, and as I mentioned before, a pairwise comparison is already conducted. Now, what this looks at here is our age ranges. This is looking at 50 plus against 30 to 49s, 50 plus against 18 to 29s, and 30 to 49s against 18 to 29s. Now, the easiest way to spot where our significance level is, is to look at our significance column. So here, we have 0 0.08, which is less than 0 0.05, and our adjusted significance, so this is where our Bonferroni correction, that is 0.23. Now it's important I mention the Bonferroni correction because if you look here in our significance column for our 34 to 18 to 29s, it's saying it's significant. However, once the Bonferroni correction is applied, it's no longer significant. So if you were to report this value and claim that there's a difference between the 30 49s and the 18 to 29s category, you're actually giving a false positive because once you've added that data collection, data correction is actually not significant. But there is one here that is significant and certainly after our error, our bomb for any correction is added, is still significant. So looking at this data, it is saying that there's a difference between our over 50s and our 18 to 29s, which is what we suspected in the first place. So in what way is it significant and how much by? So you now get a comparison with a pairwise and you get a series of lines. Now what a blue line means is there's a significant difference between the two. Now if you remember we were looking at mean ranks so the closer you were to 10 or to 100 the more apocalyptic the person was to was to believe that the climate change emergency was. So we look here at the 18 to 29 group they're at a mean score of 86.18. So that's roughly 8.6 on that scale, compared to the over 50s of 5.6, or 56.17, which is roughly about 5.6. So they're not really as concerned, they don't really believe it is an emergency, whereas the 18 to 29s do. So as we hypothesize at the start, we can say that statistically speaking, the 18 to 29s are statistically more likely to think that climate change emergency is an issue uh, and is apocalyptic compared to the over 50s and that's what our data is telling us so we're going to show you now how to actually write that up and put that into your reports okay so how that would look under your Kruskal Wallace H test where you've stated it you would then put underneath that that pairwise comparison was performed using a Dunn's 1964 procedure with a Bonferroni correction for multiple comparisons. Adjusted p-values are presented. The postdoc analysis revealed statistically significant difference in climate emergency scores between 18 to 29 year olds. Give the mean rank, which is on that little tar, that table, 86.18 and over 50s or 50 plus year olds, give the mean rank and then give your adjusted p-value and there was no significant difference between the other combinations. Now, if you ran this and there were multiple significance between different levels, you would state that here, and then you put that in there. And then that is it. That is how you run a Kruskal H. Wallace test with your postdoc and your bone for only correction. And that is how you do some statistics. And that is probably the three tests that you'll need. And other than that, you are now all completely done. Thank you for following, I've been Dr. Anthony Cliff and this has been a little tutorial guide of how to use SPSS to analyse your data.